here too much. So today, what I have got for you is I have got a Christmas commission that I am doing. And this woman is wearing a cable knit sweater, which I've never painted before, but I know it's always kind of challenging to paint different kinds of materials. So I figured I would go ahead and share the process with you um, because I'm going to be figuring it out too. So I'm going to kind of be uh, sussing it out and kind of telling you, you know, sort of where my brain is going and why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, I have done um, painting a sheer lace fabric, which is a pretty popular video. A lot of people like that one. And I'm thinking about doing some other different types of fabric coming up in the future because every single one is kind of its own beast, you know? So um, anyways, I just wanted to say before I get started, shout out to a lo-fi girl channel because they have um, non-copyrighted music that we're allowed to use in our videos. So if you like any of the music I'm playing today, it is from Lo-Fi Girl Channel. She's amazing, love it, or there, I know it's a whole team. Uh, but anyways, so to get started, let's see, let me kind of tilt this over here. Here we go, let me tilt it down just a bit. There we go, now we got the good sweater in view. Um, so to get started, I kind of went ahead and started mixing some paints. She's wearing like, a, it's kind of like a coral colored sweater, as you can kind of see from my background image. I know that's a little dark. Let me see, let me turn that up real quick. There you go, you can kind of see it's sort of like, it, it looks darker in the, um, in the YouTube video, but it's like this sort of deep coral kind of colored sweater. So I started mixing my paint here. I've got white, this is a cadmium orange, that's a alizarin red, uh, Naples yellow, burnt umber, and that's a little um, uh, terra verde, like a uh, green earth. Um, and so I've been starting to get sort of started here. I think I wanna make some that's a little bit deeper though for the shadows. So figured maybe you guys might, might wanna see a little bit of the mixing process. And then I know I'm gonna want some that's like really light too, because where those highlights hit. Um, but this should be interesting because, you know, painting like a smooth cloth or a t-shirt or you know, um, whatever kind of like toga, just like cotton cloth material. I've done all that kind of stuff, but I've never really done um, anything that was like a sweater or knit. So, you know, it's good to uh, learn how to do all different kinds. Um, if you're wondering why I have this green here, it's like all of these like reds and warm colors. Well, obviously that yellow is kind of cool, but um, mostly these warm colors. The green is to balance it out because sometimes when you're mixing a bunch of warm colors, it can get to be a little intense. So I have the green there to um, to uh, dull it out just a little bit so it doesn't get like too electric as well as just to make something darker, right? Because green would be my complementary color to the red. So there we go, look at that. There's a nice deep, dark, good red brown for the shadows. Oh, hopefully you're seeing me. Yeah, there we go. So that'll be really good for the shadows. It's um, it's a good thing to use your complementary color for darkening things. Don't use black. I basically don't use the color black. Occasionally I might grab for some super dark brown or some um, Payne's gray or something like that, but you don't ever want to use black. But using your complementary color is a really nice way to make sure you're staying within your color family, you're not going astray, and things will naturally look good together. Okay. So that's pretty much where I'm gonna get started. And of course, if I want even darker, I can dip into that. I've actually got some paint down here you can't see from what I'm working on her face. So if I have really, really dark brown, maybe I'll take a little pinch of that. There we go, okay. Um, so painting this sweater, now of course this, um, photo that I have, my image is actually a really old photo, so. I, that's kind of why I'm not bothering to like really show it as a reference because you can't, I can barely see anything with it right in front of me. It's like a photograph of an old photo. Like I said, this is a commission. So sometimes you wind up getting not exactly the best like references. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna start. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to be kind of like textured in my strokes a lot of the time like I'm gonna kind of dab it on there a little bit like I don't want to make it too rough I don't want to make it look like it's like some weird fur but I want it to look textured so I think in a lot of this I'm gonna wind up doing kind of like sort of like a, almost like a rounded kind of dab motion
again, I want her face and, you know, this hand and the fa really the faces, obviously, to be the focal point. So I don't want to be the sweater to be too busy. Right, because then that'll kind of take away. People will be like, whoa, what's going on with this crazy, f you know, fuzzy mess? So I don't want to be like too, too, too crazy with it. But I also want to actually try to make it look like it's really actually like woven or knit, I should say. Oh, sorry. Let's see, I wonder if I can close up on that a little bit. There we go. Now you can see what I'm doing. There we go. <clears throat> that should be much better. Yeah, I'm not really sure. There we go. Yeah, I feel like just having these little short kind of brush strokes is going to kind of be the ticket here. Hmm. Again, I want the edges to kind of have a little texture, but if it's too much, then it'll look like ratty. And that's definitely not how this person looks. She's not dressed in some ratty old thing. She's dressed nicely. A nice sweater, but it does have texture. Yeah, unfortunately, I think this is going to be one of those that's kind of a slow process because if I pull out a big brush, I'm going to wind up with big giant strokes. So maybe I'll just get started on this arm and kind of work my way to the collar and the actual um, woven knit while we're together and we'll be able to finish some of this more repetitive part. But I think it's working. Feeling like it's working. Again, it's all about giving that little bit of texture without making it too busy. The last thing I want to do is detract. Detract from the important parts. I want to do that, but I also want to get these little stripes. So maybe I'll just dash those in. I don't know. It's all an experiment, right? I'm not too good to wipe away something, <laughs> something crappy if I need to. Okay, I'll drop and stuff. Okay. funny I had thought about this too when I had taken on the commission and was like okay she's wearing a sweater so that's going to be something a little different but you just never know how long something is going to take when you know the first time you do it This 
Not too bad though. Yeah, so if you see, I'm literally just like kind of dabbing in rows here to kind of get that feeling of the, um, what do you call it? I don't even know what you call it, the little ridges, ribs, the ribbed top, I guess. So just sort of dabbing away slowly but surely. I think I like that effect though. I kind of paint it in the stripes like this, kind of make them deep set a little bit. And then went back over with the little dab system. That pretty, that worked pretty well. Let's see. Move darker to light. Yeah, this is cool. I'm going to live with this. Here we go. Got a little bit of a system going on now here. Okay, interesting. There we go. So kind of just a series of stripes and dabs, stripes and dabs to get that collar. All right, all right. Okie doke. Let's see. To get folds and stuff, you gotta kinda watch some of these folds. There's some darker areas. I think the secret is, is you got to keep the, depending on how thick the knit is, is how close you got to keep your dabs. And this knit is like really fine on hers. It's definitely not a chunky sweater. There we go. Ease that out of the shadow together. There we go. And like I said, the photo I'm working from is pretty, pretty bad. It's pretty old. It's about as bad as I can work from, so. Having to make a few things up as I go along. All right, let's see, okay. So I kinda got the texture going on. Maybe I will, uh, let's see. Let's see, I don't know if I like it quite that textured though. That's a little much, getting to be a little bit much. Sometimes if things are too textured, I'll literally like dab them. This softer brush, this is a softer brush. Ooh, look at that. Look at that, that tones down that texture just a little bit, just so it's not quite looking like fur. That helps a lot. There we go, nice. Cool, okay, so we're kind of figuring that out. Very good. Let's see, I kind of, I think I might just jump down here to the uh, little quote unquote braided area. I know it's not a braid, but I don't know what else to call it. 
That way, just for the sake of interest in the video, so that the video is not hours long, but we can all learn something together. You guys think about that. I think there's a couple people in here watching, checking things out. Yeah, look at that. Okay, I think I could just continue with that. Just dab, dab, dab the whole way instead of nice, soft, smooth brush strokes like we would normally think. Literally just a whole bunch of dabbing and then lightly, barely smoothing on top just so it's not too riggedy, raggedy looking. Okay, I'm going to try some of these cables um, here. Let's see. Okay, so this is actually kind of tricky um, because my photo is so bad and old. The detail is like gone, so I actually found another image online and I'm kind of working from, not the center part, but these cables, just kind of looking at them just as my cheat. So that's what's going on here. So once again, I'm gonna have to kind of figure this out myself. All right, let's try the top of this cable knit here and see, see if we can make some magic happen. Um, okay. <clears throat> Sometimes I have to psych myself up when I'm trying something new. Do you guys ever have to do that? Have you ever had to like, like make a power stance in front of your painting and be like, I will succeed. <laughs> Sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes when I'm nervous about like a piece of a painting, I'll seriously like stare at it in my studio for a really long time. Okay, let's see. This is the darkest part of right here. Okay. I'll stare at it in my studio for a while until I either procrastinate so long that I have to get it done or that I finally feel brave enough. It's funny. Sometimes it's nice to have a commission because it forces you to do something within a certain amount of time. So like, this is a holiday commission and this person um, put, put in their request a little late. So to make it by deadline, I really don't have time to like procrastinate at all. So it's good for me, good for me. Right, all, all, the, all the toughest things, the toughest character building things, those are the ones that are good for you, right? Okay, let's see, so. I don't wanna just completely outline this because that's kind of boring. But the crease is definitely all where it's darker. And it is darker on the outside, okay. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to obviously pay attention to, um, you know, that light direction. Obviously my light is coming from this way. So everything that curves around is getting that darker. And then that's casting a tiny shadow in that crevice and that'll have a little shadow in that crevice. So, and then this is like the outside of the cable because this side is, um, of the cable is very bright. So it doesn't, it doesn't get dark on that side of the cable. Instead, it's very bright. It gets all the highlight. So I'm just trying to kind of get in all that area around there. Let's see, and this is actually kind of dark over here. This stays a little dark over here. Let's see. Actually, I 
That stays kind of a lot dark over there, surprisingly. Okay. Okay, so I just need to get something that's even brighter. And I think that's starting to work. I have to assimilate it up there. It's kind of working though. I mean, it's maybe not the most beautiful cable net. It's kind of at a weird size too, because it's big enough that you can tell that there's like texturing going on, but it's not so big that you can like see every single, um, I don't know what it's called, pass, knit, loop, stitch. Is it called stitching when you're talking about knitting? I don't know. mixing and making a nice nice highlight for this side. Go, I mean I feel like the shape is looking pretty believable. I just want to make sure that it looks like woven and knit and not like just some weird thing on a shirt, right? So, ooh, look at that, giving that a little more texture. Yeah, that's gonna be the key. It's just gonna be lots and lots of texture. All right, now I can't tell. See, in this, in the shirt she's wearing that literally has this like knit thing and then it just fades off, like it doesn't go all the way up in this photo. So I'm like, how did they knit that? How is this possible? There we go, I needed that brighter. Okay, now I think I'm gonna do my, there we go, I like that. A tiny dab with that. Oh. I feel like that just kind of made things look, yeah, not not too splotchy. I don't want splotch. I want texture. That's kind of cool though. That's working. Slowly but surely. Now I think it's just going to be like a back and forth kind of build up thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think that my key is I'm trying to blotch like this, like small strokes, not like this, right? So that's what I'm kind of finding is doing little strokes kind of on the side look more like little weaves than like straight on. I'm not trying to make it all uneven like that, so I don't know. I don't know if that helps if you try to attempt to paint a knit sweater, but soft little jabs, I guess. <laughs> little scoops. And then this brush is just a big, massive, super soft, I don't know, just to kind of Give it that texture without all that intensity. Let's see, okay. Let's see. So, oops, that's not what I wanted. This is where looking at two different images makes things very difficult because okay, there we go. So I'm trying to now blend the image of this into the image of her actual shirt. This is not easy. This is not easy, and there's no way to tell you right or wrong <laughs> because there's no reference for what I'm doing right now. And I think it's just gonna be a lot of wash, rinse, repeat, kind of just like this, basically. Wherever it's bright, doing bright dabs. Wherever it's dark, doing dark dabs.
tell what I'm gonna be doing here. Come out here, that one, that one. There's a little bit of a light spot right here. Yeah, this is kinda, I think this is good. So I kinda have direction. I always do underdrawings, but I rarely do underpaintings, but doing the dabbing, this might actually help me a lot because then I'll kind of know where to go and stop. You just kind of get a, you get lost in it a little bit. <laughs> Well, if you guys are interested in seeing the completed piece, I'm certainly not going to do this whole thing on film today because obviously this is going to take some time. Um, but I'll keep hanging out here for a few if you guys want to hang out. I see there's a few people watching, so we'll hang out for a few minutes. Um, but um, I will have this. I, I will have a video. I have this one and actually a couple other commissions some drawings and things that People have been getting from me lately pet portraits and um, that kind of thing. So I actually have a video coming out. Mm, it'll probably be one of my early ones this, you know, coming out in 2022 of some uh, some of my recent commissions, just to kind of show you guys some of the stuff that I do for for private private folks, private collections sometimes that I don't really make videos of. You know, people usually aren't super interested in watching other people's family portraits get created, which you know it's understandable. Um, but that's not to say that I don't spend plenty of time doing this kind of thing. So I figured I would, uh, share some of those with you guys. I've been taking a few little short videos here and there of some of my recent commissions, probably from about the last six months or so, just a few of them. Um, and I'll have a video of that just to kind of show you guys, show you guys a little bit of behind the scenes, what goes on in the studio. Um, but anyways, yeah, thank you guys for being here. I'm going to keep doing this. You want to keep watching? Keep watching my dabbing, or start from the beginning, and I'll show you exactly how I uh, how I came to be this process so far. It's kind of therapeutic, though, especially with the uh, lo-fi girl going. Just kind of dabbing away, dabbing away. There we go. The occasional. There we go. Yeah, I feel like that smooths it out just enough that it doesn't look quite as splotchy. I feel like I'm almost doing like a pointillism work or something with this. 
I have done pointillism paintings, but it has been a long time. Yeah, I think it's just gonna be like a slow and steady wins the race type of thing, painting that sweater. I'm really happy with how the little uh, cables came out though. I think that's gonna be a nice little uh, detail. There we go. Probably make those folds a little bit more intense. But again, I don't really wanna have like any strong lines in it. I'm just kind of doing the, the shaded space, almost a negative dark space between those folds. I'm still gonna keep them not solid, strong lines. There we go, that looks like a, a bunched sweater. to calm it down. Cool. All right. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. Oops, I hope you guys learned a little something. I know that was kind of a mellow, slow one. But, uh, yeah. I'm going to keep working on this, and I'm actually going to... Uh-oh. don't like that. I'm also going to um, think about some other kinds of fabric textures I can do for you guys. I've got a t-shirt coming up. I know that one's basic, but... Um, I think t-shirts can be very helpful. Anything else, you guys? Any other uh, types of fabric suggestions that you would like me to give a whirl and try to give a demo to? Just uh, let me know in the comments. But I love you guys. I hope you're having a wonderful uh, December so far. And I will see you next time. Toodaloo! Bye! <laughs>